Linda Poindexter joins us via Skype from her home in Maryland. Linda, you were an Episcopal priest, and 11 years ago, you became Catholic. So my first question is, do you miss being a priest? You know, I really do not miss being a priest, which surprised me a little bit. Uh, the things that I really loved most um, in the priesthood, working with people, uh, working in the church, and things are, are still very available to me. And of course, I am so happy being a Catholic that I cannot possibly wish that I could go back. Linda, in your own words, how do you explain to people why the Catholic Church doesn't ordain women? Since I'm sure given your situation, you get this question very frequently. Christ came to us as a man, and this was not an accident. This was a design of the Creator. And our priests stand at the altar in, in place of Christ. Some people have said that Jesus did not choose any female disciples because he was influenced by the sexist culture of his time. What are your comments regarding that? If you think about it logically, this is accusing our Lord of being sexist, which I don't think any of us would seriously do. As a matter of fact, Jesus elevated women way beyond what the society around him did. What do you say to people who accuse the Catholic Church of being sexist? If you walk into any Catholic parish, uh, the place would collapse without women and the roles that they are occupying as, as parish administrators, as parish catechists, as running all of the education programs, a lot of the social programs, and a great deal of the things that have to do with liturgy. Well, I think some people would agree, but they would also say that perhaps the church doesn't recognize these women. Hmm. Well, it depends on why you practice the vocation you do as a Christian. If it's for notice, you have a little problem anyway. Uh, I certainly have never felt unrecognized by anyone in the church. I find our clergy very generous in recognizing and thanking the people who do so much within the parish, many, maybe most of whom are women. So when you decided to become Catholic, how did you come to terms with issues such as this one? It became necessary for me to understand that the church first was divinely inspired and given by Christ uh, infallibility of teaching. And so my job seemed to be more to know what the church teaches and then uh, be reverently curious uh, to seek deeper into why and to understand it better, but not to withhold my belief and trust in the church until such time as my mind could catch up with it. What are the differences between an Episcopal priest and a Catholic priest? The Episcopal priest is not um, a sacrament within him or herself, uh, not exactly a representation of Christ, but rather a person who performs certain functions, uh, much as in the Catholic Church, the functions of blessing, of celebrating the Eucharist, of um, giving absolution and confession, which is done in the Episcopal Church, but not as often as in the Catholic Church. That to me was the big difference, but to, the view of what ordination is. And therefore, I simply don't have any problem uh, with ordination in any of the Protestant commu communions or ordination within the Anglican communion. What comments do you have for women who are struggling with this issue and who perhaps say that they feel a calling? I think it would be very, very difficult if one feels called to that, not to think that the church was slighting you. However, I would encourage such women to keep praying. Certainly, they are called to dedicate their life to Christ. Finally, Linda, what can the church do to help these women? It is difficult for people, for women who feel that, and I think they need to be treated very gently and with great care because they are people who want to be very close to God and to be doing His will. Linda Poindexter, thank you so much for speaking with us today.